we can get underway. Um, my name is Tom Delora. Um, thank you for joining us for this CAD Dimensions webinar today, uh, which the topic will be SolidWorks Electrical Symbols. All right. So as you can see from our agenda, we will be talking pretty much purely about symbols today. Um, and when I'm talking about that, I'm, I'm talking about the schematic side of SolidWorks Electrical. Um, so what are they? What are the different types that we can use inside a SolidWorks Electrical Schematic? How do we edit them? So the software will come with some symbols um, predefined. How, do, how would we go about editing those? And how can we go about creating those? Um, so either creating ones that already exist or, or editing ones that already exist to create a new symbol or how we would go ahead and create one from scratch. All right. Uh, throughout the webinar, uh, I can see a questions window. So from the uh, GoToWebinar panel, you can go ahead and go ask any questions. I'll try to get to them uh, during the presentation, but some of them might just get answered at the end. All right, with that, we can get underway. So we'll start with what are SolidWorks electrical symbols. So our symbols that we use inside the software are really graphical. So they're pretty much lines on a page. Um, except we're inserting intelligence to them uh, through our SQL database. So through our manufacturer parts, we're associating attributes that then get linked up to our graphical symbol. So they are intelligent graphics um, that can be used to document electrical, pneumatic, hydraulic, or PNID devices. So again, they're, they're blocks on a page that uses information from a database. Uh, and the block type that we use inside of SolidWorks Electrical is a DW, DWG file format. Um, and again, where that, all that intelligence comes from, as we can see here, where our manufacturer and our part number and our mark number come from are actually these attributes that get linked into our SQL database that is running it in the back, back end of this. All right, so I want to talk about four different types of symbols uh, just to start us off. And the first one is a single line diagram symbol. So our single line diagram is our cable connection diagram inside of SolidWorks Electrical. Um, so this is going to show us some point to point connections between cables. And it's going to use a more pictorial reference to show us what our, what our components are. So for the example, I have uh, a screenshot here. It's a motor. It's uh, mark number is M1 for motor one. And I have some details about this manufacturer part that are built into the symbol. Um, for our single line diagram symbols, we can definitely use images. And we can add attributes like we can to our multi-line schematic. So I do want to jump into a SolidWorks electrical project here. So from my interface, I have, I'm going to be using a mixed scheme for most of these, these examples because it shows us both our single line diagram up top here as well as our multi-line schematic down below. All right, so if I'm looking at my single line diagram up top, I can start to see that these symbols are actually used uh, to connect cables to one another. So I can see that I have a sensor that's connected to a terminal block using a cable. So what this symbol is made out of, if I just right click and say symbol open, I can see that it's comprised of uh, attributes that, again, link to that SQL database. So if I click on my tag attribute, I can see over in my properties window that this is, represents my symbol mark. Um, my reference designator 2 is going to represent my manufacturer part. And my context 0 will represent user data, so a field that I can fill in from, from the interface to populate this symbol. All right. One thing that you don't notice on this symbol specifically is a box around it. So if I go back into my single line diagram, I can see that all my components have this box. And that's how my cable knows how to connect to that symbol. All right. Down below in my multi-line schematic, I can see that I have terminal connection points on each of these symbols where I don't have those identifiers on a single line diagram. So if I were to go to my symbols palette, which lives on my side panel, and if you guys don't see a symbols palette inside of SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you can always go to your view settings 
in your dockable panels, you can go ahead and turn on your symbols palette. So with that turned on, I have this symbol that I created for today, and I can drag and drop it. And we already know that it doesn't have an outline to it. So SolidWorks Electrical is going to prompt us with a couple options. The first one is, all right, based on the geometry I see inside the symbol, I can go ahead and add this outline connection for you. And the outline connection is, or the connection outline, is what is going to uh, connect our cable to this symbol. So I can go ahead and say, all right, add that automatically. And that will prompt me right into my symbols property. I can go ahead and find a manufacturer part for it. Um, and I can link that to my symbol and have that information come across. All right, so you can see that it put this block around it based on where attributes were laid out in the bottom of my uh, picture here. So from this component, I can go to my line diagram tab. I can draw a cable, and you'll see that green dot pop up. That means I have a connection point to B3. All right, the other option I had as I dragged and dropped is I can actually go to that selected symbol and edit it. So if I say, go ahead and edit that, it'll open up my webinar level sensor, and it'll give me the ability to actually draw in a block around this symbol. So from my draw tab, all it's looking for is an original rectangle. So the first rectangle I draw is gonna become my connection uh, outline. So I'll grab it from my origin, drag it down some distance, and just do that. I do have to save a symbol so it can update the database. But now if I go back into my mixed power scheme, go back to my symbols palette, I'll notice that my preview has a box in it, and as I drag and drop, it's no longer going to offer me or ask me, hey, you don't have a box around this, what would you like to do? It's just going to put me right into my symbols properties. I didn't tell you that I had one user data field on that symbol property. So even if I don't choose my manufacturer part, I can still give this some information as a placeholder to say um, spare sensor as my user data. And what that'll do is go ahead and populate my user data on my sensor before. All right, so the big takeaway there is when we're using a line diagram, we want to make sure that we're, especially in a mixed scheme, we want to make sure we're choosing our line diagram symbols palette. And we want to just make sure that the symbol that we're creating or using has a, uh, a square or rectangle around it that we can actually go ahead and connect to using some cables. All right. Our next type of symbol is a multi-line schematic symbol. And I'd imagine this is what we'd use a majority of the time as we're detailing our electrical projects. So our uh, electrical schematic symbol, or multi-line schematic symbol, is going to have a bit more information than our single line diagram. So at this level, we're looking for circuit and terminal connection, and the information that's going to link that to our manufacturer part. Uh, the basic idea of creating a graphic is the same. We're, we're using lines, shapes, text. We're using identifiers to make this symbol unique or at least something specific to our company that it's always the same motor symbol, it's always the same fuse symbol. Um, but we can create that using the graphic. And then once we have our graphics, our, our lines and our text, we can go in and add our attributes and our connection points to that symbol. So we're going to take a look at a symbol, um, a predefined symbol that's already inside of SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Jump back into my mix scheme, and I'm going to look at this fuse. So I can see that I have uh, Fuse uh, Fuse F1, which is Legrand. And if I right click, I can go to Symbol, and I can open this symbol. All right. Inside of here, I can see that uh, we have a bunch of information that is linked, again, from attributes to our, to our manufactured data, which lives on our SQL database. All right. So if I wanted to make any change here, so if I wanted to go to my Edit Symbol tab and say Insert a New Attribute, and the attribute I'm looking for is the Location tag. So I'm looking, actually I'll do a Location Description. So I can use these folders to actually find where my attributes are, 
And this description field is very, uh, very beneficial to have because it's actually going to call out what we're adding to our symbol. So I'm going to add a location description in English to this symbol type. And I'll go ahead and place it uh, somewhere near my cross-reference. So I'm going to turn off my snap settings by hitting F9, and I'll go ahead and line it up underneath my cross-reference. Again, to get that change to happen, I do have to hit Save. And now I can go back into my mixed power scheme. That location update won't be immediate until I actually go ahead and say refresh the symbol. So update it with all information we now have from the database. And with that, I can see that my chassis location will populate on the symbol. All right. So it's always good to have information on a symbol. Um, and in a, in a couple minutes, I'll talk about how to edit that. So maybe we don't want that chassis information on the symbol. Maybe it's too much information. All right. The other thing we could see inside our symbol are some of these connection points. And our connection points inside of 2D, they relate to connection points in 3D, if any of you are familiar with routing. So you know during routing, we need a connection point to give us a to from and actually show the path of the wire. Inside of 2D, our connection points are going to be related to that routing point, but we're actually using circuit information and terminal information to identify where wires are coming in and out of um, our symbol. So you can see here, I have circuit zero. Uh, inside of electrical, we always start counting with the number zero. So I can see that circuit zero and terminal zero exist here. And that's what this call out is, is in my terminal number and my circuit number. So terminal number one, circuit zero, is the output. And I come back up top for circuit number one. So circuit one, terminal number two, circuit one, terminal number three, and so on. So this is a connection point that's linked to my symbol. And again, I'll show, show you this uh, from scratch. Um, one other thing to note about these symbols, go back, is if I go into my mix scheme, we'll notice that those connection points do have smarts built into it. So if I pull this fuse off of my wires, you'll notice my wires are going to reconnect. So those connection points know enough that as the wire comes in, it's going to trim the wire for the symbol and then resume the wire after the symbol. So those connection points and having our circuit information line up with our terminal information is important because it's going to help, help clean up our drawing without having to do any real work. It's all going to be automatic. All right. The next type of symbol is a black box. So it's a real basic symbol type, um, and I almost use it as a placeholder symbol. So an example I use is if we have a component that's coming from a supplier or it's coming from a customer, that they're not giving us all the information. All they're telling us is that I need three-phase power to go out to a system or I need, um, I need a connector to link up here, but I'm not going to tell you what it's going to connect to. So it's kind of that unknown placeholder. Uh, we can use a black box. And the black box symbol is very quick to create because all it needs is some wires to go through it. So from my schematic tab, the black box is only available as a schematic tool. So from my schematic tab, I can insert a black box. And what this does is it cuts our wires where the black box intersects. So I'm just going to create a box of this size. It'll pick my next available number. Um, I can certainly change my route if I need to. So I can create a manual mark or change this. I can also change the class. So a, it'll come in as a black box by default, but if I know that this is going to go out to a connector or to a set of contacts, I just don't have all the details yet, I can assign it to that class and I can change what I want to call out my root number to be. So call this guy out as T2, go ahead and hit OK. And what our black box does is it notices the wire types that are intersecting it and it'll actually create circuit and terminal information based on that. So if I were to double click T2 and look at my manufactured parts and circuits, I can see that based on the wires I intersected, I now have five new circuits with two terminals apiece. All right, so it's going to give me a black box terminal type. It's all just for a placeholder of the unknown. 
but it is going to help me document better um, my schematic because now I can associate these to cable cores. They're not just loose wire ends. They actually have a place. And I can give this black box a location so I know that this might be out at my pump location. So this is going to be an external cable going outside of my assembly. All right. And again, where that black box symbol lives is schematic, insert black box, and all you have to do is draw wires across it. Uh, the black box can also be updated. So if I wanted to draw a couple more wires going through this black box, it'll show them as in uh, going over it. If I go ahead and right click and say update black box, it'll find where it crosses my connection points and go ahead and create new terminal information, circuit and terminal information uh, incrementally. All right, so this is a, it is a symbol that you can grow into. All right, the final types of symbols I want to talk about are dynamic symbols. So SolidWorks introduced these a couple years ago where we can actually have a smarter symbol. It's, it's nothing, it's not static like the other ones I was showing you. Um, so these, there's two types of dynamic symbols. We have them for PLCs, which we can see here where we're calling out the I.O. and a mnemonic that's going to describe what that I.O. is doing. Um, and we also have connector dynamic symbols. So we can place certain pins um, onto a connector symbol. We can wire it up quickly. Um, and we can also start to split a larger connector across pages. Um, so we can identify specific wires going in and out of that connector. All right. Again, this information is going to be pulled from a manufacturer part. Uh, so it's going to look up that database, fill out attributes on a dynamic symbol. Um, something you guys may not know is that these symbols are actually customizable. So I'm going to show you just the steps to get into that customization to make the symbol a little bit more unique or more specific to what your company needs. Ah, too far. All right. So from uh, SolidWorks Electrical, I have a, a PLC inputs open. So this was a dynamic symbol that was placed in here. And again, we can see our, our mark number, our manufacturer, and our manufacturer part number, um, as well as some I.O. callouts and some mnemonics that are, are turned on for the I.O. The other thing to notice about a dynamic symbol is that it will have a cross-reference. So I can see that based on this slash and dotted line, I know this uh, PLC is going to continue elsewhere. So where we get this description of a PLC is from our project settings. And if we drop down configurations, so it's not in our project configurations, it's going to be in our, um, excuse, our PLC drawing configuration. So I'll turn that on, and I get a couple options from my PLC drawing configuration manager. I have application configurations. So these are going to be PLC drawings across all projects and all users. So they're at the highest level, which is our application level. The other type is a project configuration. So that would be specific to just my webinar project. Um, so a word of advice is as you're editing a, um, a PLC configuration or a, a connector configuration, you do want to use something that exists. So use the default one, but add it over to a project. I can add this to a project. And from here, I can edit it. I can make changes. I can kind of do trial by error, make sure everything's going to work as I want it. And then I can um, save that back up to the application. So once I'm happy with it, I can add it back to the application so other users and other projects can use it. Um, but from here, so I've added this to my project. I'm going to look at the properties of it. And inside of properties is where we start to get our information. So I'll have a name for it which I will call my webinar PLC. And I can have a description. So 16 channels per page based on some, uh, some settings. And I'll just call this out as webinar. All right. So my next tab will show me the size of the PLC that I'm going to insert. So this one's going to look very familiar to the one I went over because it was used, it used our application settings. So I can see that there's some numbers that are called out inside this window up top. I'll just try to make that a little bit bigger. These numbers are not the dimensions. All they are are callouts to the dimensions inside our size settings. So my simple height right now is going to be 35 millimeters. Uh, if I need to increment that at all, I can go ahead and type 50 and we'll get a live update up top. 
all right um, as I'm clicking on these numbers the actual dimension will turn from blue to red so it'll kind of give you a call out of what you're what you're changing I want to increment that let's say make those a little bit taller and have a larger offset we can say all right our, uh, our channel width separators uh, they're not going to move where the connection points are um, so our connection point will always stay centered in this but we can kind of adjust our offset so if we know we have a set standard of the distance we draw wires um, we can go ahead and change that with our channel width so that's just how we get the graphic to appear as a dynamic connector uh, the next part is the information that we want to display on our connector. So I was talking about how we had our manufacturer and our mark number. All that information is coming from the left side of our, um, as I zoom in here, the left side of our PLC. And what this callout is, so yes, they're attributes, but what they're actually being linked to is a symbol that was created for this specific card. So I can go ahead and search for a new symbol if I want to change this so I can find different information of a PLC callout. And all it is, it's not graphical, all it is is um, attributes on a blank symbol. So we could also edit this if we needed to add any more information. So tuck behind this window, I'm just going to use my second monitor real quick. Um, tuck behind this, I can see that I have this tag, so my mark number, my ref does. If I need to make any changes to this, I can go in, insert a new attribute. So maybe I'll get that location setting again. And go ahead and add that to my PLC callout. All right. Um, that information won't be updated until I do a data update, but then it will populate in there. All right. The next callout is for... Um, some layout settings so where do we want to place this onto a page um, if we are inserting it dynamically from our PLC manager our connection points as I zoom in again are just showing us where we want our terminal information to be called out um, if we're laying out our PLC on the top of the page bottom of the page uh, for ANSI users it would be the left of the page or the right of the page um, so all this is is for a placement of the tag information and any other information we want to bring in using attributes for these uh, connection points. Finally, we can have some circuit information coming in um, for these connection points. So if my symbol's on the, on the bottom, maybe I want to bring in a specific symbol. I'm sorry, that's for the top. If my symbol's on the bottom, maybe I want to bring in a specific symbol that is linked to that connection. Um, or we can bring in a macro so we can make this even smarter and say anytime I'm using this this uh, manufacturer part I want to put a LED at the end of it I want to put a set of contacts at the end of it we can link a symbol um, symbol macro to that connection point alright so I'll go ahead and apply that and we'll close out of our settings we'll close out of here so now if I wanted to I'll just go ahead and create a, a new scheme real quick if I went into my schematic tab and said insert PLC, it'll give me the option, do I want to create a new one or an existing? I'll go ahead and create a new one. Hit my search. Um, this one, yeah, I'll grab something a little bit larger and select it. It'll prompt me with my normal information of a component property, but we'll, what will change for a dynamic selector or a dynamic symbol is I can now turn on and off which channels of this PLC I want to display. Let me just expand this a little bit. So I can um, turn on and off IO, which will actually shrink up my symbol. So right now I'm about three quarters of the page. As I turn off more IO, I'm down to a half a page. So this symbol is going to grow and adjust based on what I have turned on or off. Now I want to make sure that I'm using my setup, so my 16 channel webinar configuration. So it should be a little bit thicker than um, our default one. You can see that it grew a little bit there. Um, and my offset between channels are a bit larger, so I'm back up to a full page. 
I want to go ahead and flip the symbol around so it's at the top. I can do that, and I'll go ahead and place them. Dynamic symbols will continue selecting, so if I want to flip this guy around, I can place him down at the bottom. Now that all my channels are placed, I can see I have my manufacturer part information with that location update that I changed. I have all my terminal callouts based on my connection points. Any macro information I may have um, or any I.O. information that I might have for that symbol. I also get my cross-reference to my page number and the column that it's on. All right. Our connector tool works very similarly to this tool. Uh, a lot of the options are going to be the same. So I will show you uh, using this blank page. All I'm going to do is draw four wires across my page. All right. So I have four wires on my page. I want to connect it. So I'm trying to make a cable, and I want to show the cable cores of this. So I can certainly go into my symbols and look for a connector, let's say. And it will show me any connector types that I have. However, these are static symbols that are pretty much one-offs. They're not, they're not going to adjust or in there. They're really, if I needed to edit them, I'd have to go into edit symbol. So using the insert connector tool, I can go ahead and create a new connector. And I'm looking for something that has four terminals on it. So I can use my filter. And this one should have three power female uh, connectors. So what my dynamic tool will do is, again, it will adjust as I turn on and off um, any circuit information. So I have a two-pin connector, or I can have a four-pin connector. And as I place it down, it'll show me a symbol that's dedicated to that connection point. Um, it'll still give me my manufacturer information, as well as the description for this specific symbol. And where I edit that is going to be the same spot where I found my um, PLC change. If I drop down my project configurations and go into my connector settings, I'll have application level, I'll have project level. And inside the properties, I can adjust the size, the attributes that I want displayed, the connection points and where they go, and any information I want associated to that connection point, so utilization or mnemonic. Um, and again, the circuit information for that. So I had four power female uh, pins. That's actually being linked to a symbol that is going to populate on, on my um, dynamic connector. All right. So how do we edit some of these static symbols? Uh, I showed you how to open them up, but what if I want to make changes to them um, or maybe renumber some terminals? Um, even hide an attribute. So for that fuse, I added a location setting. Maybe I don't want to show that location setting. So we'll go over hiding and showing attributes, uh, editing some symbol properties, um, and then specifically the symbol terminals, and then going back into that tool, which I kind of already showed you, but I'll show you how I did that again. All right. So I'll go back to my... Um, here. I want to go back into my mixed power scheme and my F1. But, so right now I can see that I'm calling out my location and I'm calling out some uh, amperage here. Maybe I want to hide that information. So the easiest way to go through there is not to open up the symbol and edit it, but it's actually to go into our attributes flyout menu. So all I did was right click on the symbol and I can turn on and off individual uh, attributes from this menu including any connection point callouts. But if I click on Edit Attributes, it'll actually show me everything that I have in this symbol. Um, and it gives me the ability to edit and make changes from here. So it'll show me the value that's being displayed. And for like my location, if I don't want to show that, I can go ahead and just make it invisible and hide it. And maybe for my manufacturer part, I want to call that out a little bit more. I can change the color and say, all right, my manufacturer name will be called out as red. Um, any other adjustments here, we can um, move our X and Y position. So if we want to put something to the right of our symbol, we can update our X position. So maybe this 20 volt or our 20 amp as my user data. I'm going to move over to 
let's say 160. Um, and I want to turn it by 90 degrees. All right, so I'll make the changes inside our edit symbol attributes. And what that'll do is it'll hide our chassis call out, it'll change our manufacturer color, and we'll move this 20 amps over to the right and turn it at a degrees of 90. All right, so that's a quick change that does not affect the symbol. So if I go in and say open up the symbol, everything's going to be laid out identical. All we're doing is changing the graphic that gets displayed by using our edit, um, our edit attributes call out. All right, another setting by using the right click menu is edit our symbol terminals. And what this callout does is allows us to change what we're seeing displayed on our connection points without changing the manufacturer data. So I'll show you the uh, I'll show you the quick way here is just to come into the mark number and say maybe I want these to be more specific to input and outputs. Um, maybe I just want some other text in there, and I'll leave this as five and six. So I can hit OK. And that will instantly change what I'm seeing on my screen. All right. This does not change my manufacturer part. So again, it will show me my circuit information. But if I go in and edit my Lagrange part here, I can see that my terminal marks are still called out as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the next time I use this symbol with this manufacturer part, so if I were just to do a copy and a paste, it's going to steal that manufacturer information again, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it will keep my layout how it is until I actually go ahead and say update this symbol. It'll put it back with all my color and my placement. All right. So my symbol settings are always this by default. My manufacturer parts are this by default. But if I need to edit it for a specific uh, specific component on my schematic, I can do that on the fly. All right. So the final thing I wanted to talk about is actually creating symbols. So we've started with SolidWorks Electrical. I have my default symbols. I want to make something custom to my company. All right. So there's two key, two two main approaches to make making this symbol. We can either copy and paste something that already exists and make it our own. So copy and paste it from the library, reuse those properties and geometry, and all we're doing is either adding specific attributes or adding uh, circuitry that's going to be specific to us. The other way to do it is create it completely from scratch, and I'll kind of give you some guidelines to, to what to do from creating from scratch. Um, it definitely takes a little bit longer. Um, my, my advice is always to try to copy and paste from something that exists because a lot of that back end is already done for you. We'll, we'll briefly discuss this method as well. All right. So I said that we want to copy and paste from a library. So the quickest way is to do it right from our schematic. If I have a symbol that I want that I know is similar to something I'm going to create, I can right click, go to my symbol properties, and I can add this symbol to the library. And I can either update it right from here, or I can actually create a new symbol based on my callout that is TREL001. So I can create a new symbol, and what this will do is populate the information that already exists for this symbol. So any of my attributes, the fact that I'm drawing a metric, that it's a fuse disconnector. But what I can do now is change this to say this is now my webinar fuse. Description is going to be We'll call it a four-pole fuse. So I'm using a three-pole fuse to create a four-pole fuse is what my end goal is here. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And what that'll do, it'll put me into my webinar fuse. So it'll automatically make it into edit mode or my edit symbol mode. So if I wanted to create a four-pole fuse, I'm going to want to select this and drag it off to the left so I have more room for another fuse. I'm going to want to extend this bar out, and I'm just going to hit F8 to turn ortho on. So now I'm stuck going um, horizontally. And I want to reuse this geometry that already exists. So what I can do, I can window select around that geometry. So I'll grab all the properties of my fuse. And again, I'm just going to do a copy 
and the paste, and it will bring that geometry in for me. All right. I do want to be cautious of my snap settings. So down, down below we have our options for turn on and off our grid, turn on and off ortho, snap settings, object snap, and our line width. If I right click down here, I can see which are turned on and off, as well as what my uh, spacing is set to be. All right. So just for this example, I, uh, I kind of eyed this one. I definitely highly recommend having snap settings turned on. All right. So I added my fourth fuse to my, to my uh, symbol here. I'm going to turn on a couple more object snap settings. Um, so I've turned on, or I've added my fourth fuse, but I only have three circuits for this symbol type. All right. So I need my symbol to be smarter and match to my manufacturer parts. So from my Edit Symbol tab, I'm going to create a new circuit. I do want to keep it as a circuit breaker switch type. Actually, all those are wrong. I, I want this to be a fuse disconnector. So I want a fuse disconnector as a disconnectable um, circuit type. And I'm going to explain what that means. And my circuit number here is just the number I'm bringing in. So how many new circuits do I want? And I just want one here. So create circuit number three. What I'm going to do is go ahead and change these guys from circuit breaker switch to be fuse disconnector types. All right, and I'm doing that from my circuit properties. And all of these are disconnectable. All right, so I can see each of these circuits has two terminals that are involved in, or two connection points. So what I want to do is add connection points to my third or my fourth circuit here. So I will right click and say new connection point. And that gives me the option, is it, is it incoming or outgoing? Um, as a safe measure, I usually use this incoming and outgoing. So I'm going to turn off my snap settings, and I'm going to hit my space bar. My space bar will rotate this connection point 90 degrees. All right. And with my object snap turned on, I can go ahead and grab the end point of my fuse and place down my circuit 3 connection 6. All right. And that'll add a new connection point here. And I'll go ahead and right click, say new connection point, incoming outgoing, hit my space bar a couple times to get down to the bottom, and that'll add my connection point number eight. Right, so I'll just go ahead and drag that up a little, and I'll go ahead and save this symbol. All right, so now as I go back into my mixed power scheme, if I want to use this symbol, so go ahead and clear that out. So I'm looking for my, my four pole now. I can go to my symbols palette, make sure I'm on my uh, IEC symbols palette, so my multi-line connector, or my multi-line schematic, and I'm just going to go ahead and type webinar in. I'll see that I have my webinar fuse, a four-pole fuse. I can drag and drop. Oops. Make sure my snaps are off here. Go ahead and drag and drop. Make sure I'm on the line. Create the next available number and we'll bring that information in. My circuit information will not come in. I see that I eyed it. I was a little bit off. I should have used my snap settings. Uh, my circuit information or my manufacturer part information won't come in until I actually assign this to a manufacturer part. So go ahead and search. I'm looking for something that has four circuits. Grab this one. Make sure my circuits match. Go ahead and hit OK. And that'll populate all the information on my symbol. All right. Another way to create that symbol is to go to our library tab and our symbols manager. And from here, I can actually filter out which type of symbol I'm trying to create, what classification it's in. So maybe I'm looking for that fuse disconnector again. And from here, I can create a new, new uh, either a copy or a new one by right-clicking and saying copy, and then right-clicking in the white space to paste it. And then I can go ahead and make changes to that new part because now it's separated from that original. Or I can come into new and create a part completely from scratch. So it's going to ask me for the, its classification, um, any numbering or naming I want to give it. So we'll say this is our webinar number two. It's a new symbol. We'll make the classification on this one um, maybe a contact. 
All right, our unit system, we'll keep it as metric. Um, I can apply a manufacturer part to the symbol. I'm not going to here. So now what I can do is I'll remove my filters and I'm looking for a new symbol that was created today. It's called new symbol. Go ahead and launch that. You can see that I have nothing here. So there's no geometry to start from. Um, there's no circuit information or connection points. It's all blank information for me to start with. So I would use my drawing tab to go ahead and actually create a line, make sure my snap settings are turned on and are set to a, a reasonable uh, distance. So I'll turn my snap and ortho on. And from here, I can actually start to draw out a, um, a contact symbol. So maybe I'm just going to draw a normally open contact. Something like that. Um, so I have my circuit or my uh, symbol geometry to it. I would then go back into edit symbol and actually insert some attributes for this. So my mark number, my manufacturer, and my manufacturer part. Put that information on here. And hit save. And now this is a symbol that I can actually use inside of my inside of my schematic. So he's probably going to be a little bit large based on my scaling, but I can place him down, create a new component for me, and we'll get him to place there. Um, so I did just want to talk about some of those connector types. Oops, not from this, from my fuse. Um, so if I look at any of my circuit information, I have information transmission. So there's four options. There's a disconnectable passing, hyperpassing, or hyper hyperpassing. So where these apply is what are what is our numbering scheme for the wire coming in and out, and how do these symbols actually connect? So for my disconnectable wire type up top, I can see that I have wire number 19 going into a terminal, and on the other side I have wire number 20. So this is going to be pretty common for most of our electrical symbols that we would have a disconnectable uh, interface between the wires coming in and the wires coming out. Uh, the exception here is a passing terminal that would have the same equipotential going in as it's going out. So for this type of transmission, we would have the same wire number, uh, number 21 on this example, going into our circuit and then on the way out we still have wire number 21. The next example is a hyper-passing uh, circuit, circuit transmission. So this means our equipotential is passing through the symbols. So our symbols are multiple locations. So I have X8 here as well as here. So our symbols across, or I'm sorry, our component is across two symbols, but the connection is treated just as if it was plugged in. Um, so maybe we could use this for connectors to say, this is the male side, this is the female side. It's going to be the same wire, the same equipotential going between these pins, but I'm not going to show them as one unified symbol. I want these to be um, across, across a schematic. And our final type is a hyper-hyper passing. And this type of transmission is used for origin destination arrows. So it's not going to link a symbol in here. So I wouldn't get like an X9 call out for this type of symbol. I'm not going to get a mark number. All it's doing is passing information from one wire to the next wire and telling them that this is this is almost like a portal. So I'm going from one page to the next page, but this is still a unified wire. All right, so that's kind of my uh, my lowdown on symbols. Uh, anyone has any questions? Feel free to fill out the uh, the question box, and I will respond to you. Um, for those that are done with lunch. I, I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Um, and any information that you need about SolidWorks Electrical, feel free to reach out. Um, I do just want to note that for the uh, the month of June, so right now, there is a promotion um, for $1,000 off a purchase of SolidWorks Electrical, either the 2D or the 3D. So if that's something that interests you, please feel free to reach out to me or uh, the sales guy in your area, and we'll get you as much information on SolidWorks Electrical as possible. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.